Good afternoon. I used to work in the US for a company called Amplify Education. They support schools in uh, uh, learning and teaching and assessments through technology. I came back to India a few years ago and I started working with companies here doing pretty much the same thing. When I was in the US, I was working in the education industry. When I came back to India, a friend of mine, Georgie, he told me that I'm not working in the education industry, I'm working in the ed tech industry instead. I found this a bit funny, uh, but uh, having read some of the worrying news about the ed tech industry in India, I can see why he felt the need that there should be a distinction between the two. But in all seriousness, uh, I believe in EdTech, and I believe it has the power to actually help education transcend its problems. Let's take a step back for a second and look at the past. This is not the first time that education has leveraged technology. Did you know that? <laughs> I didn't. When I was at Harvard, uh, I had this professor, David Docterman, he was one of my favorites. And uh, he used to play this game with us, which I'm going to play with all of you. Uh, oh, I, actually, have you heard the joke about Harvard? The mandatory course that every student at Harvard must take is on how to weave into every conversation that they went to Harvard. <laughs> but let's play that game now. So. Can you help me with this? Oh, I figured it out, thank you. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna play a game. I'm going to show you uh, snippets from articles about the past uh, technologies that have been leveraged in education. And I want you all to shout out what you think that technology is. Fair enough, can I get a yes? Okay, so let's get started. Teach the children everything from mathematics to morality. So what a swing education in on them so attractively that they'll want to go to school. You'll have to lick them to keep them away. It's going to make school so attractive that a big army with swords and guns couldn't keep boys and girls out of it. What do you think they're talking about? What technology do you think they're talking about? Shout out the answers. Give it a whirl. Anyone? No, not computers. Anybody else? Can't hear you. Nope. <laughs> they were actually talking about motion picture projectors. Let's try another one. The inventor or introducer of this device deserves to be ranked amongst the best contributors to learning. The teacher knows almost as little on how to use it as his pupils. What do we think? What's it? What's the technology? Name that technology. Come on. Ah, oh, somebody got it right. Yep, it is in fact the chalkboard. <laughs> Congratulations, sir. <laughs> Let's try one more, last one. This instrument will ultimately be used as a substitute for certain teacher instruction. Others believe that all lessons with this technology will be planned as an integral instructional part of the school curriculum, but with the teacher always present to give guidance and direction in their use. What do we think? Anyone? Nope. Another guess? It was, in fact, the radio. There are two reasons why I wanted to play this game with you. The first is that I want you all to know that education has always been using technology. There's nothing new about it. The difference is that today, education is leveraging a new technology, the internet, and that's it. The second reason why I wanted to share this game with you is because how similar these articles are with what we're reading today about education technology. 
isn't it? These solutions did not fix all of education, did they? They made it better, surely. But education still has plenty of problems, right? We all know them. So, what is uh, the problem here? I think the problem is that ed tech companies are thinking like tech companies and not like ed companies. So what does this mean? This means that they are fundamentally asking themselves the wrong question. The question they are asking is not, uh, is how do we get people to use the technology? And there's the problem. And that, you can see that in uh, all the concentration that goes into uh, internet penetration and device capabilities and all those things. Technology is a tool, just like a screwdriver, uh, which can be used to tighten a screw a lot better than if you use your hand. And that's all technology is. It amplifies effects in service of a larger goal. The question we must therefore ask ourselves is not uh, how do we get people to use technology, but it is instead how do we solve the problems in education through technology. One answer that I've heard to this uh, question is very worrisome, which is that EdTech is here to replace teachers. This sounds a bit absurd. Uh, you can't replace teachers through EdTech any more than you can replace doctors through uh, WebMD. The purpose of education technology is to facilitate great teachers in great education and to help students enjoy a great learning experience. So what can education technology do to revolutionize education in the future? When I was preparing for this talk, I came across this painting by a Japanese artist. His name is Shigeru Komatsusaki. He painted this in 1969, when uh, computers were just coming out. And this was his vision of how education would leverage uh, the computers in the future. He got a lot right, didn't he? At the bottom, you can see students getting assessed right and wrong. At the top, you can see a teacher teaching through a screen, much like we've all had the displeasure of uh, enduring recently. And look, it even has two students getting whacked in the head. But uh, beating aside, what worries me is that he got a lot right. We in the education technology industry has not been able to imagine more than this guy did more than 50 years ago. And that's a problem. What education technology is doing today is making it easier to teach in the exact same way that we've been teaching all along. Now, I'm not saying there's no value there. Uh, surely, uh, it makes the lives of teachers and students easier. But just like, uh, uh, for an example, we'll take automated assessments, which have uh, significantly decreased the amount of time that teachers need to spend correcting papers. Now, these things mean that teachers have to spend a lot less time doing such work like correcting papers and they can instead spend that time preparing for classes and give everyone a great learning experience. However, these are all an evolution and not a revolution as the late great uh, Sir Ken Robinson said was needed in education. And he was right, wasn't he? We need more than an evolution. We need a revolution. Technology today has the potential to actually solve the biggest problems in education. The Indian government in uh, 2011 uh, said, I categorized these problems in education as the three E, equity, expansion, and excellence. I feel they should add a fourth E, which is enjoyability. You know, students should enjoy learning, right? But we won't get into it. That's another TED talk, right? But what we're talking about with the four E's is, the first two is talking about equity and expansion, which is 
bringing in students into education and being able to accommodate them in education. And the second two of uh, excellence and uh, enjoyability talks about uh, how they learn and what they're learning. The internet can solve the problem of the access and it can accommodate as many children as there are. It can teach by channeling excellent teachers from anywhere in the world to these students and help them learn what they want, when they want to learn it. It can also empower great teachers to create engaging learning experiences within the classroom and outside of it so that children don't have to endure education, they can actually enjoy it. The funny thing is that education can do these things today through technology. All they need to do is make sure that they focus on the right problems and make the right choices to solve these problems. And that is great ed tech. Great education through great technology. That is the promise of great ed tech. Thank you very much.